Learning Outcome 1-3, Determine Memory, Causality, Stability, Linearity and Time Invariance, given an input-output definition of a system. This video is for the sub-property, Causality. Let's start with the definition, Causality. A system is causal if at each time t, the value of the output y of t at time t only depends on the values of x of s for times s less than or equal to t. This is also called non-anticipative. A corollary that goes along with this is that all memoryless systems are causal. This can be very useful. This is for continuous time systems. For discrete time systems, we replace the t's with n's and we can use any dummy variable. Here instead of s, I used m. Let's compare the definition of causality with the definition of memory. They're the same, except for the name of the property. But each time, the value of the output y of t at time t. Now here they start diverging. Depends on a value x of s instead of x of t for s less than or equal to t. Whereas here, our x argument had to be the same as our y argument. Here, our s argument has to be the same or smaller. Thus, since the same is included in this definition, all memoryless systems are causal. Let's work through an example. Again, this is an input-output definition of a system because we have x of t and y of t in our equation. Is this system causal? If we look at these time arguments, t is less than or equal to t. This system is causal. Why? What are we going to say? We earlier showed that this system is memoryless. All memoryless systems are causal. Now what if you haven't already evaluated this for memory? Then we could state the input signal's time argument is t, which is the same as the output signal's time argument t. Since t is less than or equal to t, s is less than or equal to t. Thus, the system is causal. Remember to relate it to the example given and do not just restate the definition. Another example. Is this system causal? This system is also causal. Why? What's your justification? We can't use if memoryless then causal because this one was not memoryless. Let's go directly to our time arguments. Is the time argument for our input less than or equal to the time argument for our output? Yes. And we can use that as our justification. Remember to write out your reasoning. A third example. Is this system causal? This system is not causal. Why? Let's look at this time argument for our input. t plus 1 is not less than or equal to the time argument of our output. Therefore, the system is not causal. Remember to tie your reasoning and your answer to the example given. Example 4, is this causal? Remember that that summation expands, in the general case, to this sum of terms. Previously, we looked at an example. If n was 1, we sum up to here. Now if we look at our input values, we've got lots of different values, 
Notice how all of these are less than or equal to this. That looks good, but can we use an example to prove something true? No. The system is causal. We need to go back to the original definition and show how in the original definition all these time arguments are less than or equal to this time argument. Write the example out to help your mind think about what's going on, but be very careful about using one example to make a proof.